Hey guys, Brancher. In this video, I'm going to do a video critique of a number of images from my latest bootcamp masterclass and challenge. It's all about wild. And I filmed this while in Africa and loving all the comments. Look at that, 1,463 comments so far just this month. Wow, you guys are awesome. By the way, if you're not part of my uh, Photo Bootcamp Academy, there's a link below this video. Go up and sign up there and I'll let you know when it opens again and you've got a chance to get in. And if you are part of Bootcamp, let me know if you prefer this video recording and uh, feedback on images on a couple of random images as opposed to what I'm doing normally is giving everyone feedback on at least one of the images in the text fields below your images. So let me know. Awesome, let's get into it. So I've chosen five images randomly. Uh, there's so many great shots. So let's, uh, let's just go and have a look at uh, some of the images that have been submitted this month for the wild challenge. There's one of mine I shot in the Kruger. Beautiful baboon by Amber from Africa. Another one from Eugene, amazing. Look at these great shots already. Look at that one. How close is that? Jackie, you just uh, rock there. Look at the lions. So many wild images. Yeah, Christine, beautiful. Uh, wow, look at that. So these are ones that I couldn't, didn't want to critique on because they're so great anyway. So let's go to this one by Peter. He photographed this beautiful sea eagle in Darwin on a 600 millimeter lens, so a 300 millimeter lens with a two times converter on the back at one one thousandth of a second. So great capture, Peter. Now my rule, Brent's rule, is photograph at two times the focal length of your lens when I'm talking about shutter speed. So a 600 millimeter lens should be photographed at 1200th of a second. And I'd say shoot in shutter priority, not aperture priority, especially when you're photographing with long lenses. But great capture, Peter. What can we do with this image? Let's go bring it into Lightroom. Let's go to the develop module. And this is the, the start of this image. Let's zoom in a little bit on the head of this eagle. Now, when you're photographing wildlife, normally the focal point, the main point of interest in an image is the eye and the head of whatever it is. Now, the first thing I notice here is the sky in the background looks like it's got a lot of noise in it. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of artifacts in there. So let's get rid of that. But first, I just want to increase the exposure a little bit, maybe a third of a stop on this image. Already it's looking a little bit better. And then let's go to the detail panel in Lightroom. Now go to the noise reduction and just crank it up maybe up to 20. And let's have a look. You already see the difference. I can turn this panel off and on, you can see the difference in the sky. There's less artifacts in the sky. Now, when it comes to sharpening, you can sharpen this eagle a lot, but what it does is it sharpens the background too. So all those artifacts, all the noise gets sharpened too. And this is where the masking comes in to effect. And I love this masking option in the details panel in Lightroom. So hold down the option or the Alt key, and at the same time, click the masking slider and move it all the way or close to the right. Now what's happening there in this black and white image is the black is masking that sharpening and the white is letting the sharpening through. So in other words, the sky is not being sharpened, but the edges of that eagle and its eye and the, some of the feathers are being sharpened. So there we go. So that's what I've done there. I've used the masking to make sure the sharpening is only applied to certain parts of this image. So we can get a nice clean sky in the background and a sharp eagle. So that's pretty much what I would do here. Peter, great shot. Let's have a look at what I've done. That's the before and that's the after. So just a couple of simple little things can make the image so much better. All right, let's go on to the next one. And the next one is uh, Dion from South Africa. He's got this beautiful image of these two baby cheetahs, cheetah cubs. And he photographed it with a 300 millimeter lens at 1 500th of a second. Now that's a good shutter speed. I would have gone 1 640th of a second if you want to double the focal length of the lens so that you don't get any lens shake or blurring. But let's see what we can do with this image. Let's go over here. We'll go to the develop module. We'll go right to the beginning, the import part of this image. 
All right, so according to this histogram, this image looked like it's properly exposed. That's a good exposure. So I wouldn't do anything there. The only thing I would do, you notice the background is a, is really light, that, that grass in the background. So I would add some vignetting straight off the bat. So you don't want to go too much like that. That's way too much. You want to just have a subtle amount of vignetting, add feather, add a lot of feather to it. So my rule when it comes to vignetting is if you notice the vignetting, it's too much. And only other photographers will notice it. <laughs> well, I would notice if it, if it was like that. If it's subtle and you don't notice it and your eye goes to the main point of interest, the two cheetah faces here, <clears throat> then the vignetting is good. All right, so I've got some vignetting there. Let's go into the cheetah faces. So how can we make these faces pop even more? I would use the radial filter over here in Lightroom. You can drag that around the cheetah cub's face. And then I can add a couple of things here. So I can add the exposure. Whoop, too much. Yeah, no, you just want a little subtle thing. So maybe increase the shadows, not too much. We don't want those eyes bloodshot like he's been out drinking all night too young to drink uh, maybe the whites up a little bit uh, the shadows the whites uh, might add a little more contrast maybe even the exposure just ever so slightly there we go so pretty much there's the before and there's the after I may take the highlights down a little bit on the chin there all right that's it so cheetah and vignetting there's a the before there's the after looks good now what about this cheetah's face so here's a trick you can use you can click on that radial filter you can click on that filter that i've already created right click on that and go to duplicate duplicate it so now i've got two filters there one there and one there i can move the other filter over this other cheetah's face it's got all the same settings as the original filter what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull the highlights way back on this one because that cheetah's got direct sun on its face the shadows the whites i'll go the whites back to where the norm may be so i just double click on the name whites and it goes back contrast so there we go that looks good to me get rid of it let's go to the before and the after so a few little things here i did i did some vignetting and then i lightened the faces slightly on those two cheetah cubs and it just adds that extra little bit of interest to the images so well done, Dion. That's a great one. Let's go to Kerry's shot here of the wild horses or horses. She photographed them at one two thousandth of a second, so really fast shutter speed on a 250 millimeter lens. Great. Let's go to these horses. Let's go to the uh, develop module. Let's go to the before image right over here. All right. So notice these horses. It's a good capture. However, my eye doesn't know where to go. Do I go to this horse at the front? Do I go the horses at the back there with the eye? They're a little bit dark, so let's see what we can do. So first thing I'm going to do is up the exposure. Now look at this histogram at the top here. You notice there's a lot of blacks on the left, mid-tones, but not many highlights and, and lighter tones there. So as soon as I increase the exposure, the histogram goes to the right. So there's now there's some darks, there's some mid-tones, there's some lights, and there's some highlights there. So I've just upped the exposure by 0.8 of a stop. I may bring the shadows up a little bit more too. And there we go. And you notice as I bring the shadows up, look at this histogram. It goes, the little mountains go up and down. <laughs> so there we go. So already this image is looking a lot better to me. And have a look at the before. And now look at the after before and after so ready it's looking better so the other thing I might do is add a little vignette so we don't want to go too much right we just go a little bit we add some feather cool that looks good now I've still got two points of interest I've got the eye of this uh, horse in the foreground and I've got the eye of the background horse in my my eye is going from this side to that eye to this side to that eye so I'm not sure which one to do to which one is the main point of interest now if you've got two points of interest your brain gets confused and it's not as impactful. Your image isn't as impactful. So let's go one point of interest. I'm going to choose this front horse. So how do I minimize the back horse's eye there? What I'm going to do here is take a graduated filter, drag it over that horse from the top left down this way, and we're going to take the exposure down a little bit and maybe bring the highlights down. Yep. Mm. 
maybe just the exposure there. There we go. Cool. So have a look at the before and have a look at the after. Where does your eye go? Does it go to that foreground horse or the back background horse? I think my eye goes to the foreground horse and already that's such a better image, more impactful and just a few little things. All right. Great. Well done, Kerry, for shooting that one. Let's go to Gina. She photographed the spider in her backyard. She photographed it at a very fast shutter speed, one one thousandth of a second at, at, with a wide angle lens. So that's a great um, shutter speed. Now, the thing I want to show you about this image, we'll go to the develop module here. And this is something I spoke about a lot when we were in Africa with all the Bootcamp Safari members who were there. Thank you guys for coming. It was an amazing trip. <laughs> I'm really battling to get into real life. I want to go back to Africa, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It was such a great trip. Now, what I mentioned a lot there was if you're photographing something with a, a lot of whites in it, a lot of lighter colors, make sure you overexpose your image. And if you're photographing something with a lot of dark colors in it, like an elephant, or a rhino or something, you've got to underexpose your image. So think about someone in the snow. If you're photographing a family or a snowboarder in the snow and you've got a lot of whites, make sure you overexpose your image by a stop. If you're photographing a black cat, underexpose your image by a stop. Okay, so that's what I did here. So we can go back to the original where I imported this image. I'm just going to up the exposure by almost a stop, uh, 0.8 over stop. And I may just add some veneering again to this image, just a little bit, feather it. Okay, so there we go. Let's have a look at the before, after, before, after. Uh, I might add a little more contrast to this one too. Uh, there we go. Okay. And what contrast does, it actually spreads out the histogram. So you'll notice the blacks and the whites, the, the blacks and the highlights. As I add contrast, it spreads out the histogram a little bit more. So not too much, maybe 25%. So there we go. Before, after, a little bit more impact there. Great one, Gina. And for the last one, randomly chosen this uh, monkey in Bali, photographed by Romy. On a 105 millimeter lens, he photographed at 1 80th of a second. So to me, that's too slow. On 105 mil, I would shoot at 1 200th, 1 250th of a second or faster. Let's have a look at the monkey. Let's go back to the original on this monkey. We go to the develop module. We'll go back to the import. All right. And if I actually zoom in on the monkey, you'll notice his face is a little blurred. He's probably moving as Romeo was photographing this. And at 1 80th of a second, you would get movement there. So I would shoot at a faster shutter speed, but it's still a great shot. So what can we do here? A couple of things. Monkey's looking from the left or to the right, and he's kind of framed in the middle of this image. So I'll go to the cropping tool, and I want to leave space for him to look into. So I'll crop a little bit off the left here. There we go. And maybe a bit off the top. So now his face and the baby's face is in the rule of thirds area and he's got space to look into. So that's the first thing I do with this image. The second thing, look at the histogram. There's a lot of information missing from the lights and the highlights area. So that means the exposure is a little low. So I'm going to crank the exposure up by 0.7 of a stop. Now I've got lights and I've got highlights there. I might add, add a little in the shadows area. Great. Now I might add some uh, vignetting again to this one to darken the outside. Remember, it's just got to be really subtle so you don't notice it, but you want to look where the monkey is and not on the edges. And I think I may go to his face or her face. In this case, I think it's a female. And I'm going to add a um, radial filter to her face there. So what I'm going to do, I might up the, the whites a bit on her face. Now, how do you know which area this is working on, the radial filter? Hit the O key for overlay. And then it shows you the pink or where this is working. And make sure your invert is checked on here. If the invert isn't checked and you hit the O, your radial filter is going to work on everything except 
what you selected. <laughs> so let's hit the invert, hit the O key. There we go. The radial filter is going to work on that area. Okay, so we can up, up the whites. Okay, a little. We can up the shadows a little. There we go. Maybe add a little more contrast when you're up in the shadows and maybe the sharpness. There we go. So let's move it away. Yes, it's, it's as if Romy had a full flash on top of his camera when he photographed this image. So there we go. Let's have a look at the before and the after. So what did I do here? I cropped this image slightly. I've increased the exposure, added some vignetting, and then I've used the radial filter on the monkey's face just to bring the main point of interest, the monkey's eyes and face, uh, made it a little bit more impactful. So there we go, guys. Those are the five random images I've chosen from this month's Bootcamp Masterclass and Challenge Wild. Let me know below if you prefer this type of feedback on images uh, and or do you prefer the old type of feedback. And just remember, if you're not part of Bootcamp, click on the bottom and sign up and I'll let you know when it opens again. This is Brent. Have an amazing day.